So in the last video, we got Bolt imported into a new project in Unity and got the windows set up as you can see on my screen right now. What I wanna do in this video is just introduce some of the basic ideas of Bolt and we're gonna do something fairly useless. We're gonna spin a cube. We're gonna maybe make that cube um, change its scale, maybe change its color a little bit. We'll do some basics to just introduce how Bolt works. And in the next video, we'll start to do something a little bit more useful in terms of creating a real game. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new cube. We're gonna drop in our cube. And if you can't see it in your scene view, uh, you can double click on your cube so you can see it. I'm also gonna grab my main camera and I can see here a camera preview. I'm gonna be able to see my cube. And I'm going to recenter my camera so that it's looking the same direction as my scene view. And I'm gonna do that by holding Control Shift F. And you can see I realigned my camera preview is more similar to my uh, scene view. You see I've aligned my camera with my view. Next thing we're going to do is work on our flow graph. So here in my project, I'm gonna go down to assets and then into the macros folder. Uh, I'm gonna delete this tutorial uh, demo that I created in the last um, video, but I'm gonna create a, another flow macro. And this one I'm gonna call spinning cube. So what again we have here is an empty flow graph and we need to put in the commands of what we want it to happen. Now, before we get there, we should talk about events. And there's two main events that we're gonna use. And um, there's lots of other events, but the two main ones we wanna use are gonna be the start event and the update event. The start event is gonna run once, and it's gonna run when this flow graph first gets started. So any units, any code that we get attached to it is only gonna run the one time. The update event is gonna run every frame, and that's how Unity and most games are working. They're working on a frame um, per frame type basis, meaning it's gonna run all the code once. When it gets done, Unity says, hey, that's the end of the frame, and then it's gonna run all that code again. So if we wanna create a spinning cube, we don't want it to just spin once at the beginning, we want it to spin a little bit every frame. So we're gonna want our update event. So here in my flow graph, this is where we're gonna add everything in. So I can right click and then select add unit and it's gonna bring up the fuzzy finder. And this is gonna do its best to guess uh, what unit we want based on what we're gonna type in. It's not necessarily straight up literal, it is kind of smart. You can also get to the fuzzy finder by right clicking and then pressing A. It'll bring up the fuzzy finder as well. As I was saying before, we need to bring up the update event. So rather than hunt for it with my mouse or my arrow keys, I'm gonna simply type in update and it's gonna bring up all kinds of different things. The first one is the one I want. It's the update event. And it also shows you where it is in that hierarchy in case you wanted to find it later. And you can scroll down and you can see there's all kinds of other units that have the word update in it or that Bolt thinks you might be looking for. So I'm gonna click on this first one and we got this update event. Now, there's not much going on here, but what you can see is we've got this control node. And this is one of the places where Bolt really separates itself, in my mind, from Playmaker. In Playmaker, this would effectively be a state, and I'd have to create another state. But what we can do here is I can click here, drag over, and drop. And when I do that, the fuzzy finder is going to come back up. And I can select my next command. Now, that seems really small, uh, a small improvement. Uh, but it makes things much, much faster. So what we wanna do is we wanna spin this cube and we're gonna do that with a rotate command and we're gonna rotate an aspect of the transform. We're gonna type in rotate and now you can see there's lots of options and it does take some time to make sure you find the right command. In programming speak here, we've got this transform rotate. You can see there's lots of transform rotates here. These are different overloads of the rotate function. Below all the options, it's giving us the some information about that option. So if I go to the Euler one, it's asking for a vector three input. I don't necessarily want to do that. Maybe I just want to spin on one axis. I can look at here, and here I've got my X and Y angle, and it's also got this option of relative two. Let's select that one. And what this is going to do is allow us then to say how we want this to rotate. And again, we gotta remember, this is gonna be doing this every frame. Again, then we can move these units around by grabbing their header. If you grab, a say, a parent unit, it's gonna move the children with it. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna move along the Y angle. We're gonna spin on the Y axis. So what I can do is grab this uh, value node and go over here and it's gonna bring up the fuzzy finder again. Now, because this Y angle is of type float, meaning it's a number and with the potential for a decimal, it's going to bring up various uh, f float type commands. So I could say, I just wanna use this float literal and this is the way we create values. And again, this is a place where it's much, much faster than Playmaker. So I'm gonna cl click float literal. And what this allows me to do is now I can uh, type in a number here. So let's say I do one. And what that's gonna do is change the Y angle by one every frame. And it's gonna do it, as we can see here, relative to the world, meaning it's gonna do it on the Y axis of the world, uh, not itself. And so you can choose different options here, uh, depending on what you need. If I push play, nothing's happening in this flow graph, and that's because I haven't attached the flow graph to the cube. So to do that, we're gonna come into the cube, we're gonna hit add component, and we're gonna add a flow machine. And now, the way I kind of think about it is this flow machine, it's just kind of the container for the flow graph. It attaches the flow graph to a given object. And so as you can see here, we've got a couple options here. This first option here is embedded versus macro. Now, for the most part, I think the macro is gonna be the option that we want, and that is the default option. Um, maybe hit that up in a later video. But we do need to drag and drop the flow um, graph in here. And so what we can do is grab that spinning cube and drop it in there. You can also hit the circle next to it, and you can select all the uh, flow graphs in your project. That's another option for that to work. Now when we push play, we can see that our cube is spinning, and here in our flow graph, we can kind of see the flow of how things are working. We can see here that we're passing the value of one into our Y angle. And you can see these are pulsing effectively every frame. And this is the control flow. It's going through here to the rotate, which then goes back and asks this float value um, for a value of how much it wants to spin. So there you go. That was pretty quick, pretty simple, not terribly useful, but we do have the basics of how to create a flow graph and how to get it to interact with our scene. So let's take this one step farther. We've got the cube rotating, but now maybe let's say we want the cube scale to uh, change as we go along. So what we can do is drag out this control a little bit and we'll drop this. And now I can search for transform scale. And there we go, we're gonna transform dot local scale. I can use this. And what our options are here is it's taking the transform, it's, by default it's choosing itself, whatever this uh, flow graph is attached to, that's the transform scale it's going to change by. And it's going to use this uh, vector three down here to determine how to change its scale. So I could do something as simple as say one, two, and three. Now if I push play, you can see that the scale of our cube has changed, but it just did it statically, it just did it once. And the code is telling it to change every frame, but it's already at that value, so we're not seeing anything different. So let's see if we can be a little more sophisticated than that. We're gonna take this uh, value and drag it down here. And what we're gonna do is create a, a new vector three. Now this isn't getting us a whole lot of new functionality because I can still just type in my one, two, three. But now you can see that I have a control for each of the components of the vector. You'll also notice that this unit has a control going through it. I don't need to use that. And I can tell that because my unit is not dimmed out. Bolt will do a little bit of auto debugging for us if a unit is not going to be used, despite the fact that it might be connected in some way. Uh, if it's that part of the code is never gonna get accessed, it will be dim to give you a clue of, hey, that's not attached yet. So what I can do is now I can have each of these values vary independently. But let's say I just want my cube to expand and contract and expand and contract in a nice smooth motion. We're gonna do that with a sign function. So what I can do is again, now take this, drag it over here, and I'm gonna search for math sign, and there is our uh, math F, the F is for float, and we're gonna use our sign function. And just to keep things simple, I'm gonna have this sign function go into all three components. So I'm gonna drag 
and connect like so. I'm gonna do that so that our cube is gonna be uniform in its scale, but the scale is gonna change over time. Right now, if I push play, nothing's gonna happen because we got, what we're doing here mathematically is the sine of zero. You can see the value that we're putting into the sine function is zero, and we're gonna get a constant value into our vector. Nothing's really gonna happen. Uh, other than our, effectively our, our scale is gonna go to zero and our cube's gonna disappear. So what I can do then is change the input to our sine function, drag out that value, and I don't wanna just put a number in. I could just put a number in, but then again, it's gonna be static. Instead, what I can do is have the value change by time. So what I can do is come down here to time, uh, and if I start since, uh, a couple options here, if I do time since, I got time since level was loaded, I got time, real time since startup, in our cases, both of these will work. I'm gonna choose real time since startup. And the only difference there is if you're gonna have multiple scenes or different levels in your game, those will give you different uh, values. So I'm gonna use that. And this unit, as you can see, has no input. It is just a pure output. And so what this is gonna do is give out a reading in seconds from the time that we push play until the current frame. As that number grows, our sine function is going to oscillate and it's going to oscillate all three components of the new vector, which will change our local scale. So again, if we push play, we'll see that our cube is now spinning and is its scale is oscillating. So there you go. If you look over here in our transform, you can see that our Y value is changing and you can also see that our scale is going back and forth. Now you might note here that our scale is also going negative. That may or may not be a problem for what you're trying to do. We could fix that with some absolute value or some fancier math, but we're not gonna do that as a spinning cube isn't really all that interesting or useful. So the intent of this video was just to kind of get folks started, get the basics of how Bolt works, how to create flow graphs, how to implement them and get them doing something in your scene. The end result, not terribly useful. A um, rotating and oscillating cube, not exactly something most people are gonna put in their game. Next video, we'll get to something a little bit more useful, a little bit more applicable to a game that you might want to create yourself. So thanks for joining, hope to see you next time.